days in a row and I'm pissed because I can't use all the cardboard that I've collected to go out there and treat my garden. Yeah. It's ruining my life. Yeah, I'm sorry. I went out yesterday and, and my sorry. jeans got wet and I just had to Ugh. sit in a coffee shop and drink my coffee while my jeans were wet. Ugh. I, if honestly, if somebody was like, do you think this is a witch? Yesterday while I was sitting like, in the coffee yeah. with my wet jeans. Yeah, I'd go, on. yeah, that's yeah. a witch. Yeah, that's a witch. So what's the science here? So the rye basically gets infected um, and it replaces the shoots in the grain. So like the little like sticks in the grain. I'm not the person <laughs> you should ask about agriculture. So I'm trying my best here. Um, so it places it with something called sclerodia, which are purple black growths okay. that can contain lysergic acid and ergotamine. Fancy words. Woman but in STEM. <laughs> woman in STEM. Woman in STEM. But basically, all you need to know about that is lysergic acid, which is contained in these. And it's you You can look up a picture. Maybe we'll insert a picture if you're watching the video. But it's like Give me more literally. Work to do. Yeah, Carly, <laughs> you're going to have to superimpose an image on of a the, fucking this, grain. A piece of, a, of grain. A piece of grain. I'll send it to you. Okay, you thank you. You can just copy and paste. Don't screenshot it. Save the image to I'll, your phone. I'll and save send it, it to me. my phone. I'll send it to you in, in good dimensions. Thank you. So it literally looks like a little, little piece of grain like a regular piece of grain and then it's everyone got like picture a little, grain like, everyone picture picture grain if you can't picture grain get in touch with nature oh, so fuck. It's, got, <laughs> and it's like a little black worm a little purple black worm on the oh grain. okay literally what it looks like but it's not it's too fungus. like you would just kind of like the people of salem presumably or like because this has been happening this is like a thing that has happened throughout history a lot where people would get this poisoning they wouldn't know where it was coming from because if you see it you kind of just looks like the grain has gotten too much sun it's kind of like period brain where you think that your life is objectively horrible because mm -hmm. your hormones are plummeting yeah but then when you get your period you're like oh, oh i didn't want to kill myself so their life they're like oh i'm hallucinating but in yes. actuality they don't know because everyone's hallucinating group and also they have no concept of like logic yeah. back then like right now if i hallucinate I'm like, I'm like I'm okay, I got to check up on this. <laughs> I'm not like, I got to take this to the court of law and talk about yeah. the canary I just saw suckling from my neighbor's hand. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's like, if you're hallucinating back then, you're just sort of like, well, this I got to talk to God and also um, Rick down the street. Yeah, and Morty. And Morty. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're on the same page. So all you need to know about that is lysergic acid was used in, LS, or in LSD. So in 19... 19- have you done LSD? I have done L LSD. Okay, I haven't. Um, it's like shrooms, but you feel closer to death. I don't really know. Like, I had a friend who did LSD in high school and he said that he exited his body and then watched his house burn down. Okay. And I was like, but his house didn't burn down. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, he also like bought it off of the internet with Bitcoin before oh, Bitcoin God, became no. a thing. Like no. he was talking about Bitcoin and I was like, I don't know no. about this. So I didn't, I was like, I don't have any interest in doing LSD, but I do think about him almost every single day because that was truly in like maybe 2014 and he was talking about Bitcoin then. So I hope he invested <laughs> is my whole thing. I'm like, I truly wonder. I hope he this is one money. of my friends. Yeah, this is one of my friends, his cousin. Oh my God. And I was like, I wonder, but I don't, I don't want to ask. Yeah. So like, also I feel like LSD, the effects of LSD hallucinating are pretty like nature-y in my experience. Okay. And most of the, the people I know where it's like, I just kind of thought about like, cause I was at a cottage. I thought about the ducks. I thought about how the mountains were breathing with me. It was like very beautiful. I love that. Then I played chess with Brendan for like an hour. Oh yes, um, we talked about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it like, but I think Do you think it would make you hallucinate like witchy stuff? I think you could. So this if is it was, if what's you were interesting. Like, if you were um like, I can't, cajoled isn't the right word, but coerced. Yeah, okay. this is the thing where it's like, I think that like, if you take, a lot of it. It's a lot different than taking a little bit of it. Yeah. Crazy, I know, right? Yeah, that's kind of counterintuitive. But so the guy, uh, this uh, the scientist who invented LSD in 1938 was experimenting with um, the the lysergic acid from this Fucking, infected. You know that guy fucks. You know this guy fucks. His name Hoffman, and then he described his experience as quote: "I sank into a not unpleasant, okay. intoxicated condition." I perceived an uninterrupted stream of fantastic pictures, extraordinary shapes with intense kaleidoscopic play of colors. And then he took a higher dose and he you, said, no. and he said, wait, wait, wait. He took a higher dose and he said, quote, a demon had invaded me, had taken possession of my body, mind and soul. I was seized by a dreadful fear of going insane. So it, what you're saying is that can happen. First so of all- I'm just saying it's weird he said demon. I also want to jump in here and say, you're not that good of a scientist if you're doing all of your experiments on yourself. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> you can't do that. That's not how science works. Yeah. But 
that is good to know. Yeah. Um, that if you take a lot of it, it feels a lot more sinister and evil. So if people that's are really housing that rye, well, also when comparatively I, body weight, like it's a lot yeah. of young women. It's a lot of young women. If they're if they're like really chomp 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 chomping it down, it's like I can take a single Advil and, and it really works. Yes, and you're falling over. Yeah, exactly. I'm you're drunk. drunk. You're drunk with Advil. Well, this is like smoking weed. Because yes. Reese never smokes weed. And then I'll give him, I'll be like, do you want a little bit? Like a little gummy that's like two milligrams. And then he'll be like, yeah. And then he'll be like, I don't feel it. And then every single time he'll take like three more. And then he'll like have to lie down on the ground <laughs> where that's what that is. If I'm yeah. like, you simply need to exist in the world where you can barely feel it. Absolutely. Like anytime you're like, I can't feel it. That's what, that's a good high. Well, I will say about LSD, like, and I've only done it once. I know that some people are experts. For me, I'm really scared of like acid flashbacks. Where yes. cause you can't fly a plane if you've done acid. Oh. Yeah. I was convinced. And you and you have plans to fly I have a plane. Plans to fly. I don't have my driver's license, but I really think one day I'm gonna fly a plane. Okay. I was convinced I was having a bad day the other day. I convinced myself I was having an acid flashback, but I think I was just tired. Yeah. Well that's hard because sometimes you just disassociate because um life is life is really hard. It doesn't make any sense. And you know sometimes you're walking down the street and you're like, I hate it here. Yeah. Me, okay, did you me ever I hear have. this story? Because I think my parents did a lot of drug fear mongering mm -hmm. um, because I was very much, I don't know if this was the same in Canada, but in America, it was very in vogue to be like, check your Halloween candy because yes. somebody's putting LSD in it. Has this ever happened? I've got questions. My mom kind of just told me that and then gave me my Halloween candy. Yeah, just be she like, was like it, people are putting knives and drugs in this. And then here, have was a Snickers. Like, I'm going to go. You're not you and you're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> um. Wow. But my dad, I think it was my dad. I don't know. But he told me this story that's like apparently a famous story. But also my dad also told me that Pierre Trudeau was gay and was hooking up with Mick Jagger. So he lies. I thought that's true. Okay, then maybe it is. I thought that he was, he and um and Margaret Trudeau. Is that her name? Yeah. I don't know. Maggie oh, Trudeau? she fucked Mick Jagger. She he was, was fucking gay. Mick Jagger and he was oh there. Oh my God. My like dad is going to be so happy this. that you are saying this. Because he said like this. I said this, this. And I said this in, you can't Google it. There's nothing about it. It's, it's <laughs> Rob. There's nothing. It's not on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, it's just like a businessman or music person in Toronto. Like, you know, this happened. Because he said this to yeah. me. And then I said it in school like it was a fact. <laughs> and everyone was like, no. Um, so I'm sure he'll be excited just truly so excited to because have this. Because I thought they were swingers and that's why there's the whole like Justin Trudeau's dad is Fidel, Fidel Castro. Castro. Which if we're talking about conspiracy theories, I believe. I'm, I buy into that I one buy a into bit, that unfortunately. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want this to ever come back for me when I inevitably run for office. Oh, but uh, Blair, uh, you, there's too much. You simply can't. I think I've said too much to run this for office. Thing. I often Maybe I could run in the awesome hot girl pot party. Exactly. The people's party of Canada. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> the girls party of Canada. Yes, hot girls party <laughs> of Canada. Um, but he said the story where this man took a bite of a whole acid sheet and then for the rest of his life, an octopus followed him around. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if that's true, um, but it's literally stopped me from doing acid any time I've been presented with the opportunity. No, so I'm like, I, I simply can't, like, I can't live my, imagine I'm trying to record this podcast and there's an octopus in the corner. To be fair, I did like not a lot of acid. I can't remember if I even did. I think I did like half a tab and then the other half a tab like a couple of hours later. So I think I did a whole tab. But like, truly, the thing that was freaky about it was I felt so normal about death in a way that was like kind of nice. But this is why I want to do shrooms. Up. Shrooms, I feel like you think about death less. You feel more about nature. But like mm -hmm. when I was on acid, I was very much like, I know how I want to die. I know when I want to die. I know how I could do it. I could do it right now and I'd be at peace with it. And it was nice in the moment. But then when I sobered up, I was like, I cannot do this. Yeah, that's fucked. This like, is the, yeah, where it's just like, it's like, very- you're like, I know how I can do it and I'd be fine with it. Like, yeah. that's not good. Where I'm like, I was very much like, and it was like, I feel like it did kind of actually permanently change how I think about death, which is kind of nice. Like, this is, I watched a documentary about shrooms, about how people, you can like, you can very- like um, pointedly, so I'm getting drunk, so I'm forgetting my words. Um, <laughs> You've not sipped your wine. I'm drinking. I have. I mm -hmm. drink, I've, for mm -hmm. lunch. I had baby food of pear and five crackers. Baby food of pear. <laughs> um, for lunch, I had baby. I had food baby of food pear of pear and five crackers. Five crackers. Um. Anyways, um, that you can do like a guided thing of like acceptance of death which yeah. is what I want because whenever I get really high, I constantly think about how I'm dying and, I, and there's cancer in my body as we speak. I've, I have awesome. a lot of, 
this is the craziest thing about being on antidepressants for me that work for me is that it's uh, taken away so much of my depression that I've realized um, how many obsessive thoughts I have oh, because yeah. I'm no longer depressed. I don't want to die, but it I'm like, I think about cancer nine times a day. Oh, that's nightmarish. Yeah. No, I have this like, um, I, I have like a cut in my nose or something that's making my neck hurt because of nerves. And you're like, I have and cancer. And I'm like, I have cancer, I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> so I got my period that. twice in two weeks and I'm like, and oh, cancer. Cancer. So cancer. Yeah. Well, okay, before we get into debunking it, and okay, I, I we've gone like, over so it, how wanna, would you sum up your thoughts? Yeah, I want to sum up the idea of it to make sure I understand it mm -hmm. in that uh, heavy winter and then very wet spring. So mold grows in the rye crop, meaning that when people eat it, there's like a little amount of LSD in it, or not even a little, like it could be a considerable amount. Mm -hmm. And the theory here is that every time you eat bread, basically, or rye, in your ale or whatever, you hallucinate. So that means that if, um, it's not saying that like, it, somebody obviously had to be lying, but like, if I'm saying like, oh, there's witches around and I'm sober, mm -hmm. but then you guys are high, you're like, fuck, there's witches. Is that what it's saying? Cause pretty the, much. Because the accusation started in February, presumably before the rye crap. I is my thought. So yeah. it must be like later when the actual like panic start is the argument. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think that the argument too is that like everyone was kind of just like drugged on this like rye. This well, everyone was drunk off their asses, surely, right? Yeah, like it's the this, past. This ergotism, ergotism is the disease is what it's called. So everyone's got this disease. And so everyone's buying into this hysteria. Everyone is like, Ooh, like I like I believe it. It's like when like, you do I'm coke high. and you're like, we should write a musical together, yeah, kind of thing. Of like everybody sure. in the group is like, we should write a musical. We should write. I would a love to write a musical. It would be like perfect if we wrote a musical yeah. right now. So yeah, I feel I, I feel medium on this. Like I think that this is one that is like interesting to think about, and I, it is interesting that like ergotism. And this kind of rye poisoning was like, is like super present in history. Like it's this yeah. mystery disease that pops up mm -hmm. everywhere. Like people are constantly like sick and they can't figure it out. Um, shall we, shall we start debunking? Well, I want to say how I feel about this. Yes. What's, what's your I feeling? I hate it. You hate it. Um, mm -hmm. I agree that it's interesting. And I like this idea of like, we weren't really there, so we'll never be able to know. And I think that's why these moments in history that are so horrific stick with us. It's probably also the same reason we have such like a fascination with true crime hmm. as people have like, we want to understand why this happened, Yeah, but we'll never be able to really understand it because humans have the capacity for evil and yeah. good. Like there's just no way to understand it. Yeah. So I think that this is very much like clinging to this idea of subconsciously being like, no, no, there's no way it ha they had to be drugged as mm -hmm. opposed to being like, no, this could happen again. Fully. Absolutely. It could happen again. There's no way to stop it besides free will and and hope and hoping yeah. and praying. But I, I am happy that it exists just for like variety of thought. The yes. reason I resist it more so than I think even other conspiracy theories is just because it is presented as fact by the people that believe it. This is the thing. I think it's very common by like, it, it, especially like- It's a very I um, on, actually kind of thought um, point of being like, actually, did you actually know this? Well, I went on Reddit, the holy land, to look up exactly. conspiracy theories for the Salem witch trials. And this gets posted in yes. like r slash today I learned like every three months. Yeah. They're like, it was caused by this like rye poisoning. Mm -hmm. um, so basically it's- Pretty much like all scholars disregard this. Yeah. They're like, this is very, very highly unlikely. And there are three reasons I want to highlight. Okay. Door number so, one. Door number one. There's no records of gangrene or diarrhea. And those are Gutting kind of hear. things that like it, to hear. were happening to like everyone else who has this poisoning. So like, it'd be very, very weird if you got this poisoning and only hallucinated. Is gangrene trench foot? What is gangrene? No. Gangrene is like... Gangrene is like a like from a, the trench a virus. I think it's probably gross to say on the podcast. Yeah, you don't you don't want to see these images. But uh, imagine a foot where there are lo like uh, you know how you look at moldy food and there's like big oh, sections Christ. of weird color. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not great. Um, and then also, and you would like, think somebody would at least write about that in the letter. One hundred percent, because like again, we know the Puritans were very Love. good at yes. keeping records, so they probably would have been like a bunch of young women have gangrene feet. And also are shitting their brains out in, in the casting uh, studio bathroom. Exactly. As you experience. Exactly. So, um, this is the thing. 
Uh, so that is something that is helpful with talking about the Salem witch trials is like, obviously we weren't there. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as old timey shit goes, the Puritans give us a lot of information. Yeah, it was a lot of information. Like besides the dogs, there's almost never been a moment in which I've been reading about the witch trials and wanted like more information that wasn't offered to me in some yeah. way. 100%. Door number two yes. is that- A brand new car. A brand new car. Look under your seat. Yeah. So door number two is that uh, more people would have been infected. Like if this mm. were the bread that everyone in the town was eating, it wouldn't have just been this like relatively small group of girls and young women where it's like uh, people, it just would have been more of like everyone yeah. experiencing this. Whereas like in the Salem witch trials, there's very well documented cases of people just being like, this isn't real. I don't believe this. Or like people being accused of being a witch and being like, that's ridiculous. Well, also so much of this is based on spectral evidence, which is basically the idea that like, we aren't there, but we're taking these people at their word, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it feels like if they were poisoned, that wouldn't even be a thing. They'd be like, no, it's true. Y'all don't see the bird on, like, cause the, the yeah, girls yeah. would constantly be like, there's a bird on her shoulder. The bird is her familiar and there's nothing there, right? Yeah. But everyone in the court's like, well, uh, she must, spectral. like, whereas Spectre. it would, more people would, would see it. Yes. Where like there was some cases of that, but like you would just think that that would be constantly happening. If oh yeah, the power of suggestion is like, especially if you're on acid and you're like, doesn't do you see that duck over there? And then everyone's like, yes, yes, I, I see the duck. duck. I love yes, the I duck. The I duck. love the duck. I, the duck. I see the duck as my friend. And it's like, there's the duck no, is me. The duck is me. The duck is me. Yeah. But dead. There's no duck. It's a, it's like a rock. Yeah, exactly. Like, do you see that rock? The rock's a duck. The rock's coming alive. It's a duck. It's a duck. It's always been a duck. Yeah. So. And then door number three, which was the thing that honestly kind of was like the moment of like, ah. Oh, for me, like it really like pulled it together, which is I'm gonna draw your attention back to the year that Dr. Linda Caporeal discovered this and proposed this theory. When she was an undergrad. 1976. Mm. What was going on this 76? Acid, Grateful Dead, people getting high all yes. the time. You know, acid rock, all this when stuff, right? When was the right? satanic panic? So, uh, right around the same time. Okay, so, so there it's you like, go. There was a renewed interest in, you know, these things about the devil, a renewed interest in the Salem witch trials. There was and also- acid. And acid. And people, like, there was growing concern over its use. There was, like, you know, there's this idea of, like, you know, people trying to figure out, like, or trying to prove that drugs make you do evil things. Well, yes, that's the thing. Because in that documentary, I watched about, like, using how shrooms- can like really be used to treat mental illness in a really mm -hmm. great way. Um, it was like the research was growing, growing, growing until the seventies when this like anti-drug movement st started and, and then, then the research it. in like shrooms as mental health, whatever, like plummeted basically until mm -hmm. now. Um, so yeah. like there was just a lot of incentive. Like surely she did this partially because she's like, I can get a fucking A if I say, oh, yeah. this is her, every vampire is a lesbian. You know what I mean? This is her. 100%. The witches in Macbeth represent how men hate women. Yeah. You know, like she's like, I, this is a slam motherfucking dunk. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm going to get an A and I'm going to get a reference for my masters. Absolutely. So if she's like, she's coming up with this and like, we don't blame her. I think it's like probably like the news was talking about it. People were talking about it. People on campus were probably how, doing acid. Oh, exactly. Like how old was she? Like, I'm not holding anybody to something that they yeah. did when they were like in their and early And to be 20s. fair, it's a great theory. Like there's a reason why it spreads it's so fun. much. It's also like um, this rye poisoning Happens. is super present throughout history. Yeah. And to say like, yeah, it might've been a factor in this like horrific thing that happened is not out of the ordinary, but I think people would have been a lot sicker. It would have happened to more people. And it's just too coincidental that this theory comes up at a time where people are super, super, super worried and concerned about acid. Yes. So that's the rotten wheat Debunk. Conspiracy. I don't agree with it. I like it for the, you know, the, the drama it brings mm -hmm. to this narrative, but I don't agree with it. Yeah. I think it's just kind of like, I think it's exactly what you said where it's like, it's easier for us to be like, well, this only happened because they were all poisoned as opposed yeah. to be like, no, people can do really fucked up things to each other. Well, totally. That's why they're like, they try to like ascribe, there's like a million studies and papers constantly being like serial killer brains were formed at birth. And it's like, no, babe, no, we don't just, people are fucked. Yeah. And no, babe, you can carve a turkey. You can carve a person. You can carve a turkey. You can carve a person. Oh my God. Side note. I finished Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. You like it? So good. Okay. I actually really liked it. Okay. That's a wreck for the pod. That's a wreck Is for it everyone. Is it thrillery? 
It's kind of thrillery. Because I want to read a literary thriller. It's kind of, it's thrillery in a way that like I enjoy because it wasn't like, it wasn't like the Da Vinci Code where it's just like you're, you know, I've like, stopped listening. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like Robert Langdon gets in the pool and then he gets out and then there's a hot woman there and then like, where's the goblet of fire? Like, um, it was very much I'd like- i the fuck out of that book. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or whatever. The- Sorry, he gets into the pool and then he gets out and there's a hot woman there? Have you read The Da Vinci Code? No, I haven't. Because that's pretty much the plot of every Robert Langdon book. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> He's in the pool. He has a swimmer's body. And mm. then the hot woman's there. And then at the end, they kiss. Okay. And then in between, they find a portrait Very Murakami of him. <laughs> a woman walked awesome. in and she had big boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Her boobs walked in, followed boob- by a woman. <laughs> Two titties walked in the room. Two, and I'm Followed depressed. by an annoying voice. Yeah. That's the, what the titties were nagging. Um, and <laughs> I love the Beatles. I love the Beatles. And I think about life or death, but she also had titties. And I love her titties. And she had short hair and titties and she fucked me. Her titties sang Strawberry Fields Forever to me silently until I fell asleep. And she fucked me and she said she loved me. And then she committed suicide. And then I fucked her sister who also had big, big old titties. So and then her sister committed suicide. In the Da Vinci Code, the women are doctors. And okay. researchers or yeah. PhD students or something. In Murakami, they're all like 18. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. point one for Dan Brown, Robert Langdon. Feminist Dan Brown. Um, but you're saying that J- Bright Young Woman is like a fun kind of. It's not it. fun at all to read. <laughs> but okay. it, it is kind of like, it's thrilling it. in the way like you want to figure out what it is. But like the way that they like, I'm not a big, I don't like the serial killer stuff. I don't like the true crime stuff. But this was a really cool angle. Okay, I, I want to read it. I'm um, rereading can... Conversations with Friends right now and absolutely loving it. Okay, I love that. I read that for the first time last year and I thought it was great. Uh, you can borrow my copy of I would love Bright to. Young Woman just because right now it's only hardcover. Let me finish hardcover. Stoner and oh, then, yeah? I'll, then I'll do that. Okay, amazing. But I was reading Stoner and then I was getting way too stressed about, about writing where I was like, I'll never do this. And I was like, I need to read something I do want your similar. Stoner opinions. Yes. Um, but we can do that off cam. Okay. Not for you guys. Next theory. Next theory is the eat the rich theory. Love. Some people believe that the executions were just a massive land grab Mm -hmm. uh, and a way to get land away from the accused. This was a big thing um, that I read a lot about, especially with um, relation to Giles Corey, which we talked a little bit about. because he didn't want to confess because they would take his land. Exactly. But also, from what I read, like, maybe he, you know, like, maybe legally, if he didn't confess, they wouldn't take his land. Babe, the second those shackles are on your wrist, like, they are... They are what, what ransacking are you your are you house. Do? What are you going to do? You know, like yeah. that's just part of it. Um, yeah. And yeah, part of this theory, if I, if, and if I misspeak, you know, jump in there, Blair. But it was that um, it's a Salem village versus Salem town thing. Mm. And I don't remember um, at this given moment because the Wayne Gretzky is hidden. But <laughs> the, like one of them was more rich and one of them was on the outskirts. I would imagine it's town is the more rich one and then the village is the outskirts, more farmers or whatever. Yeah, because the town was like the real like economic center. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and like as the village uh, grew larger and larger, there was kind of this more like fear of land loss. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, that's why there was so many gossiping instances. Whores. Yeah, whores, let's mm-hmm. say it. Um, because- people are talking about inheritance and stuff all the time. Like it just like felt, it was a very like stressful time for money, stressful time for land. Land is money. And also, like you said, all these people are like poor people coming over from England who didn't have land before. Mm -hmm. And so they're so excited and clinging on to this land. Exactly. And also because of the Prince Philip's war between the indigenous people and the colonizers, um, there were like a lot of widows. There were a lot of like people who couldn't really like handle their land who were now saddled up with it, like i.e. women. Um, Where people are sort of like, well, she's, not she farming can't the land. Run it. She's just, she's not running the land. She just has it. There was also a sentiment of like, some people came out of the war a lot better off in a way that people saw as being like unfair. And also, and some people lost everything and they were like, what's the, the like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. And the war me, in and of itself is about land too. Like 100%. it's just, it's just, you know, it's how basically everything, everything you read or watch today is in some way about class just because it feels so present. Mm-hmm. Like, Land is the talk of the town. The name on everybody's lips is going to be land. 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 And Roxy. But mainly land. 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 Roxy. Land. Land. Um, Yeah. So like there is this belief. And I, I, what I like about this theory is that I think I kind of believe it just on a sliding scale of being like, I do just believe that this is at its core kind of like a horrific event that happened. Um, 
But I'm sure that part of it is just like, I know we got their land. This is the thing where like, I think it's kind of like, I agree with you in the sliding scale where it's like, I think it'd be like someone saying like, picking any societal event that's happening right now. Like, yeah. oh, the Oscars were so bad this year because of like class war. And it's like, well, it was a factor, but it was mostly because of like, you know, the broadcasting company having budget cuts. Yeah, exactly. It's all connected because it is yeah. happening very much in the moment. Regardless of whether or not it's the cause, they're around and it's affecting people's lives. Yeah, exactly. So it's like for them, it'd probably be silly for us to say like, we have a conspiracy that this was all about land because like, they're yeah, like, well, babe. everything's about land. We love land. Can't we get enough of the stuff. Got lost in the sauce. Land we love. Love land. Land we love. love yeah. Land. Um, especially like with this one, I, I also think um, a big kind of, not a conspiracy theory, but a big part as we go through this podcast that I really ascribe to when it comes to my beliefs about the Salem witch trials is like the kind of power of gossip in it. Yeah. Um, just how it's really interesting for me to think that like these girls accuse people based on who they hear their um, bosses or mothers or sisters or aunts gossiping and talking about. Absolutely. And if you're obsessed with land, that is just intrinsically going to affect. And it's going to be who you gossip about. Absolutely. But well, also like, again, when I was like reading about this and it's such an obvious point, but to me, I was like, oh, where it's like a lot of these houses were two rooms. So if your kids were in one room and then you and your husband were bitching or you and your sister were talking about like who they hate or you who bitch to your land, husband, but you talk to your sister, you talk to your sister, you bitch to your husband. And I stand by the what I said, mm -hmm. um, you know what I like? It's just like the kids were hearing that. So uh, it, like, it was a general sense of contention. So I don't know if we can like fully debunk this one. No. But because also people are going to have different yeah. motivators. Like, I don't think that the young girls who were accusing people were like, ah, oh, the land grab. Like, I just don't. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't. I'm sure there were people. I yeah. like the Putnams, like, uh, like the, the Putnam patriarch who like signed a million different arrest warrants yeah. and like witness statements. I'm sure that maybe for him, it was motivated in some way being like, I would like this land, please. And I want to remain in power and control and land is how I do that. But it's what might be true for one person is not going to be true for everyone. Absolutely. Did you also see that they're going to reboot the Titanic? The, the ship? What? Yeah. What? Sorry, okay, what? so I found this out from an at midnight joke. Mean? So <laughs> Reboot? Like they're going, there's, a, there's an Australian billionaire who's going to make the Titanic the boat again. Oh, uh, Like a, a direct replica, but it'll be free of the woke mob. Yeah, because the woke mob is what sank the Titanic. That, okay, so Blair, you're going to be so happy that that's literally the joke that Taylor Tomlinson said on At yes! Midnight. <laughs> you are the Taylor Tomlinson of this ah! podcast. You rock I a ponytail knew. and you seem intrinsically bisexual to me. Yes, yes. Oh, awesome. Ugh. Um, yes. But yeah, I wanted to bring that Next up. Next I'm going to wear booties with heels. I know. Millennial women are kind of trapped in that and we love them for it. We're going to have our booties with heels eventually when Gen Alpha becomes the ruling generation. Oh yeah. But we just don't know what our booties with heels is yet. I proudly saddled the millennial line. I, I like to think of myself as bisexual for generations as wow. well as, as sexes. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I'm I bisexual, understand. bisexual and generation bisexual, bi-generational. I, as I get older, and I know I'm not that old, I was listening to a podcast with Finn Wolfhard on it, and he was talking at this, like, Finn Wolfhard was like, you know, when you get older, and I was like, Finn, shut the fuck up. Shut up, Finn Wolfhard. Um, who we talk about a lot on this podcast. It's because we want him on the podcast. Finn Wolfhard, Finn, come on the podcast. Come on the podcast. I do feel like Finn. if you booked a movie with Finn. him, Blair, Finn. which could happen. Could happen. He would come on the podcast. If you were, like, in a scene with him, so I, I just really- just to book a movie. Just book a movie, <laughs> Blair. It's not going to be me. <laughs> We're really yeah. saddling the Finn Wolfhard booking with you. So you got to yeah. take that on. Okay, I'll take it on. I'll get Finn Wolfhard. All this Woo. is to say about millennial women is that as I get older, even though I'm aware mm. that I am young, um, I love being out of touch. Like when people are like, millennials are so out of touch. I'm like, I revel in the fact that I don't have to follow a trend anymore. I love it. It's nice to stay half in touch, half out. Because I do think that like, some people will check out too early and they're just like, I just don't care. And then it's just sort of like, it just seems like now you don't give a shit about anyone, but you're like, you don't care about the collective anymore. Yes, that's what pisses that's me bad. off. But I don't really care about like, um, like how I'm supposed to be using Snapchat. And yes. that's freeing. And that is freeing. Because I don't, it's, my brain has reached capacity in such a way that I'm going to Snapchat. I'm not adding any new friends on Snapchat. I have three people I Snapchat. No one else is adding to that list. No. 
I'm not on Snapchat. It's done. And you don't need to be. You don't need to be. Quite frankly, I I don't delete it just because I have so many videos saved and I don't mm. know how to get them off. Yes. Yeah. Shall we move on to the next theory? Well, okay. Well, um, so oh. we don't believe, let's, I just want to make sure we have kind of our thoughts on this, um, that we kind of, it's a sliding scale. Like it's hard to say you believe it or you don't believe it. And the debunking of it is just like girls, little girls did it too. And they don't give a fuck about land really. Yeah. I think it's like, it's less of a debunking and more of just like a, a deep dive into it. Like we've, you've, this conspiracy theory is just sort of assessing the social, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, um, attitude of the time. Yeah. Like, it's like saying, oh, everyone is anxious right now. Like, we do things because of anxiety. It's like, well, yeah. Yes. Yes. Continue. <laughs> and? Yeah. Like, what, what are you going to add to that? Yes. Like, it's kind of a baseline for any theory. Like, it's it's less of a conspiracy theory and more just, this is also happening at this time and probably mm -hmm. affected it in some way. Yeah. So, I, I feel like probably if I were to infer and make a, you know, connection. And please. Probably. The people who were, you know, in charge of these executions were more gung ho about getting rid of people that had land yes. and kind of saw it as an opportunity. Totally. And I think that that's a conspiracy. And I think that, like, that would be hard to debunk or prove, but it seems unlikely that no one thought of it. Was everyone thinking about it? Unlikely. Was someone thinking about it? Very likely. Yes. And class is just like intrinsically related yes. to how people think about this, especially when it comes to women. If you think about the first three people that were accused, I mean, Tituba yeah. was a slave. So mm -hmm. not, I don't know how you would even define that in terms of class, but bad, <laughs> right? Like you're not like a worker, really. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah Good is was homeless. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Sarah Osborne was in, in deeply entrenched in a battle for inheritance. Yeah. So it's like, it's just gonna, you're gonna be victims of gossip and also gonna be a lot more vulnerable just yeah. based on your class standing, especially because we'll talk about this a little bit more. We talked about it a little bit in the men episode. We'll talk about it in the woman episode as well. Like if you were really rich and well-connected, especially later on in your, uh, like in the witch trials, you could just run yeah. and hide or escape in the middle of the night if you were friends with the governor or whatever. Yeah, you could just like, hide out until all blows over. Big fucking surprise that class <laughs> affects how you are treated, yeah. you know? So yeah, I think so, yeah. I think half debunked. Yeah, you can't fully debunk it, but you can also say it's not the main thing. It's not like everyone's yeah. like, let's get together and plant these little girls, mm -hmm. do a theater piece in which they accuse these people the so we back. get the land. Yeah. Because also, again, if you're out of the first few people you're accusing, Tichibus doesn't have land. Sarah Good doesn't have land. It's only mm -hmm. Sarah Oz. Like, it doesn't... They're not playing 5D chess. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? 100%. So shall we move on? Yes. So, conspiracy theory number three. The devil is real theory. I fucking love this This theory. is my favorite theory. This is so insane. It's so contrarian for no fucking reason. I'm obsessed with it. This is my... When we did season one on Titanic, there was a theory that uh, a mummy on the oh. Titanic sunk it. And this is my mummy, mummy sank the Titanic. I couldn't agree more. It's that the devil is real. <laughs> um, and he did all this. <laughs> yeah. Um, Conspiracy it's, it's theory. Favorite. The devil is real. The devil is real. Witchcraft is real. And it all happened. What I liked about this one is that it kind of has changed as uh, time has gone on. So the theory of this is that the devil is real and that the devil did the Salem witch trials. And in the beginning, the theory was that the devil was real and that these women and men really were witches or a considerable yeah. amount of them were witches yes. and therefore the witch trials was good actually. Mm -hmm. But in recent times, it's changed into a different, it's been like re kind of like modernized. Really? Well, okay. and now it's that the devil has um, possessed the accusers. Oh, yes. So well, it's like the accusers and the legal people and the people that were carrying out the witch trials and murdering these people, that was the devil. the devil. Well, Ann Putnam, who was the biggest accuser, yeah. who, and we'll talk about her more in a later we, episode. And we talk about her quite we a bit talk about her because she's Ann Putnam's a turf. Around. She's a turf, she's, she's probably. The, and famous founder of a, of a spelling bee. 
<laughs> the 25th annual. <laughs> the 25th annual, Putnam County Spelling Bee. Yeah. She, uh, uh, yeah, she years later puts out a statement being like, I was possessed by the devil. Mm-hmm. And it's this big, long statement trying to clear her name of just being like, actually, the devil's there and it made me do it. And that's why I did it. And actually, I don't sweat. And that's not what I'm doing. And it's, it's actually funny that you bring that up because like, I never sweat. This is actually, I actually don't me. sweat. I actually and was I've, never on the second floor. I was going to say, <laughs> I've actually never been on the second floor. <laughs> she was Prince Andrewing oh. through this being possessed by the Here's devil. Here's how I feel about life. There are two <laughs> things that I wish I could do for the first time again. Mm-hmm. Hear David Bowie. Oh, yes. And watch that Prince Andrew interview. <laughs> I want to be eternal. At the same time. Yes, I want to be. got <laughs> heroes blasting <laughs> on the TV. It's just Prince Andrew being, I don't sweat. I have a medical condition. Oh, brown, Oh, wish I could swim. I've actually never been on the second floor. Oh. No, that's what I want. Those are my two favorite things. Because mm-hmm. honestly, to hear David Bowie again, I'm so jealous that I that I can't be 15 again. Yeah. And hear changes for the first time. <laughs> but watching that Prince Andrew interview, mm-hmm. and which you just know off screen, some PR representative has their head in their hands. <laughs> because they're like, well, this child that you were dancing with, they said that you were sweating on her. And he's like, oh, well, medically, I don't sweat. <laughs> so, I think that can be- So that's, that's that. Fully disproven. Yeah. And then the second thing, they show him a picture and they're like, this is a picture of you with this child. And he's like, well, that's on the second floor of the house. So that can't be me. Because I've never actually been on the second floor. This is a photo that they have. The (laughs) photo exists. And he says, oh, well, I've never been on the second floor of the house. And then they go, how do you know it's the second floor of the house if you've never (laughs) been? That is my video version of listening to Starman again. I want to listen to Ziggy Stardust and the spiders from Mars blasting in my beats by Dre while on the TV we're chromecasting that interview. That's what I want for my birthday. Oh, that's awesome. Just on on loop for 12 hours. Oh, and then I die. Starman. I love that. Yeah, so I, I, do, I do love this. <laughs> Here's the thing, and I hope no Christians get offended. Sorry, Christian. If you need, like, religion. And then named Christian. Yeah. Hope you don't get offended either, babe. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, 10. You think people go by 10, Christian? Though I did have a friend who, he goes by Chris, and then one day he he comes to a party and he's like, I'm going to start going by Topher. And he went for Topher for about three days. I'm sorry. Yeah. You and can't then, soft laugh. But you the cannot problem is soft everything about him. And he kind of had like a, like he was leaving school. I still know him. He's still around. You actually know him too. Oh my God, Blair. If he had relaunched his Topher, I think it would have gone really like okay for him. No, because he has Topher vibes. He's got Topher vibes. I didn't know I knew this guy. Yes, yeah. but I do. And I know exactly yeah. who you're talking about. No, yeah, because you know if I him. had to go through every single Chris I know and identify which one, should be Topher. If I say a Chris, you know, should be Topher. You would I know think exactly of this guy. You who would you're know talking him. about. You'd be like, it's him. He should be Topher. That should and be he Topher. didn't do it. It's always kind of boggled my mind because he was like, I think I'm going to go by Topher. And he should did. go by Topher. I'm going to oh, talk to him about now. it. Yeah. yeah, you should go and say, Blair said that you should go by Topher. And I agree. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what were you saying about offending Christians? Um, it Stuff like this is tough because I think as a, as a greater society, so many people have just decided that God doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not saying either way. Love your life choices. As long as you're not hurting other people and religion does something for you, nothing but love and light. This conspiracy theory, I feel like, doesn't have legs just in the fact that the the devil doesn't exist. Like, I'm, is that crazy to say on the podcast? I think it's that the devil's not real. Why is that the thing that you're the most scared of saying <laughs> on the podcast? Of everything you've ever you said? said. You just said, I wish I could watch the Prince Andrew interview for the first time again. You know, you're like... Is it, okay to say, is it okay to say the devil isn't real? <laughs> is it okay to say that the devil's made up on the podcast? Oh, they're going to come for me. They're going to come for me. And Those are the people, not the, not the cabal of royal elitists and Epstein people to kill you. It's, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think it's interesting too, because like, even if you believe in the devil, and I see you and I hear you. And but, that's valid. Uh, and that's valid if you believe in the devil. To think that they cause the witch trials, I think is an insult to the devil. Yeah, the devil could do more. The devil could do more. The devil could do so much more. The fact that you're stopping at, like you're doing this petty kind of gossipy thing. No. Mr. Satan, what are we doing? Mr. No. What, okay, here, let me ask you a question, devil. Blair. Um, Why don't you what go down do to Georgia? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Uh-huh. Uh, the most, like in history is an example, if you had to say the devil did this. Okay, uh, I feel like the most, like, I, I think that the devil is in the details. And I... <laughs> 
And I'll, I fucking hate I'll explain. I, I, I hate you so much. <laughs> I want to punch you in the head. I've never wanted to punch a woman before. <laughs> so I think the devil's in the details. I think the, the devil's in the, in the details. In the details. And I say it because... And I wrote this down because I was like, when I was, I was, I was, I was, I was like, this is an amazing point. What is the devil? Hmm? Wait, what? <laughs> Where? And he's in hell. <laughs> no, that's what his is, house. What is the devil? Is it the failing crops? Is that the devil? Is it misogyny? Is it the boredom? Is it misogyny? I think that the devil's in the little things. Maybe it's Hades. The devil's is a little treat. The devil's is, not a lot of people know this, but the devil is actually a little treat. Actually a little treat. The devil's the cat. That's the cat. Not the cat. <laughs> so I was saying that the, the devil, the devil, I think, I think it's a bigger, I think it's, you know, what, what, do, you, is, what do you think the devil did? say the devil? I think that the devil. In, the histo in history. I think that, you know, when you're like, when you're in a fight with your sister and you're like, I could say this mean thing. Yeah. And I could not say it, but I'm going to say it. I think that's the devil. And then you say it and the devil's like, well, you said that. I think it's mean. Okay. And then those little things add up and you get. And you traumatize your sister. You get the plague. You get the black plague. Okay. And I also think that the devil was the second shooter who killed JFK. Okay. So you were just leading up to wanting to say that the devil was the guy who shot JFK. Yeah. I try yeah. in my life not to do the thing of just waiting for my turn to talk. Mm -hmm. I and really... you, were, you were pretty doing it. I'm pretty mad that I went on the devil with the details thing because you clearly just want to talk about JFK. I think it's fine. we're I, not fighting. I think as a person, I'm pretty good at like listening. <laughs> um, but that was not my br my my brightest moment. <laughs> that was me asking you that question, and you're talking, and in my head, I'm going, "What would my answer be?" And then I think of my answer, and then I just have JFK. to wait for you to finish. Mm -hmm. But usually, I'm pretty good at listening. Yeah. No. Today, I decided to monologue about a thought I had, and I was like, you're "But I want to talk about yeah, you." You're a good hey. listener. I also just want to point out. There was a book called the Malleus Maleficarum, also known- Lots uh, of words for you to pronounce on this I know, podcast it's today. Been, it's, it's, been a, it's been a tough day for you. It's been a hard day. I, I'm doing some tongue somersaults. I'm not going to say the real name again, but it was often translated to Hammer the Witches. And apparently was like okay. one of the best-selling books at the time. Okay. Uh, and it was kind of referenced by the elite in society. Who was it written by? Some good German guy. Okay. Would you up. say that he is the Taylor Jenkins Reed of his time? <laughs> so, I'm not, I'm not so, honoring that with an so answer. You're so fucking mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're getting mad at me for devil in the details. Okay. It was Heinrich Kramer. So okay. picture him as Kramer from oh, Seinfeld. Don't even have to ask. Writing this book that says witches are evil. So if you recall a few episodes back when we were talking about the history of witchcraft, about like how at one point a bunch of people wrote books basically saying that witchcraft is real and they're mm -hmm. evil and it's a threat. This was one of those books. Okay. And this book has become super popular. People reference it. The like New York a Bible. Times bestseller. It's a New York Times. It's and it doesn't even have the little dagger next to it that you get no. sometimes when do you know this what the little dagger is? No. Oh. So you have to sell X amount of books to be on the New York Times bestseller yeah. list. There are certain things that I have a niche amount of information about, and this happens to be one of the them. New York Times. The dagger is when you are a New York Times bestseller. So you have to sell a certain amount of copies and you also have to be like of a certain like there has to be like there's some kind of like value where it can't just be like a porn book that gets big for one day like it has oh, to yes. be like a, what they define as a book that could be a new has york times be seven like, husbands of evelyn Hugo. absolutely the dagger mm -hmm. is when it is under suspicious like activity that you've sold all these copies because otherwise you could if you were very rich just buy 70,000 copies of your own book and put mm -hmm. them in a warehouse somewhere and mm -hmm. be say Carly Thorne is a New York Times best selling author mm -hmm. which is what every influencer would do so they if they can't prove it but they think that you did they'll be like we'll put you on the New York Times best seller list but we're going to put a gray dagger next to your name oh yeah. that's crazy yeah i'm very into this idea of like influencer books like it's very very interesting to me um, and that's a big thing because a lot of times they really want to be on the New York Times bestseller list because in their brain, it proves that they didn't get a book deal because of their followers, which like, girl, go for it. Who cares? Yeah, Write like, your book. You I got a book deal. Who cares? Yeah. Oh, shit. I, yeah, that's also confusing to me too in a lot of ways because like, I've always thought this, I'm like, how many people are buying books? Like sometimes I hear a book number and I'm like, that's confusing to me. Well, because for a book to be considered like a very, very successful run, you have to sell 25,000 copies. And I'm like, and I that's have- that's not a lot. And with love and respect, I've got maybe seven friends that I would classify as readers. I agree. And out of those friends, I think you and my sister are mm -hmm. the only people 
even with my, like, I don't include myself in this number. I think you and my sister are the only people I know who are actively up to date on new books coming out. No, truly. Like it's very, very, it's not a lot. Yeah. The amount of people that buy books, I think is like way less than people think, which is why when people yeah. say millions of copies sold, like they mean it and they're happy about it because that never fucking happens. Well, because like, even I think about like, I buy new, very few books. Yes. But I buy books a lot, but I buy like used books a lot. Yeah, you love a, kind you of like acquire love books. love a backlist title. Yes. You love to go to the BMV and pick yes. up a book that's been published in 1802. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's I very, pre-order. like I'll pre-order books from authors I really like. I do, but also because my sister works at a bookstore, often if there is a new release I want, I'll just go through her. So it doesn't yeah. even count as me. Meeting like, your I don't sister, even like, you haven't, have you met my sister? No. Your sister to you is exactly my sister to me. I've thought this. It's I've exactly, thought this might be true. It's, it's the exact, I can't explain it <laughs> beyond what it is. Well, she's a, like, I, I feel like I'm a slightly more socialized version of her. It's, that's exactly it. Yeah. And I'm a more socialized version of Katie. Yeah. And it's just like a little bit of like, Katie is a little more edgy. Like I am, even though I'm not like an actor, actor, it's like, I'm the actor version of Katie, even though Katie's mm -hmm. more of an actor. Yeah. But it's like, I have blonde hair and I don't wear all black. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, it's no, very 100%. interesting. Cause now I'm in a book club with Blair and Blair's sister. Yes. Brooke is iconic. She does not listen to this. She's like, it's too weird to hear you. I turned it off. And I was like, fair. <laughs> and I respect you for that. Fair. Um, so yeah, everyone was referring to this book. So uh, I don't know where that ties in, but like if there was a book right now that said like, yeah, the devil is everywhere and everyone was referring yeah. to it like it was law. It's called Girl, Wash thing. Your Hair. It's Girl, Wash Your Face. <laughs> You were so close, but so I far. Had it locked and loaded. Uh, wash, wash your, your hair. hair. <laughs> wash your hair. Um, but yeah, so it's basically like a bestseller. Yeah. And it's telling everyone the devil is real. So you're like, okay. Yeah. Probably. So I believe the theory. I think the devil's real. I think <laughs> the devil did all this. You said that clip from a podcast to our uh, podcast group chat where somebody was like, if you ever, are, if you have a plan and you do not want to leave the house, it's, be but you have, you, it's like, you're going to hang out with friends or something and you don't want to go. That's because the devil is stopping you because God has a plan for you. Yeah, that God, plan. God has a plan for you with that party. That party, something special is going to happen to you, a gift from God. And the devil is telling you not and to go. And respectfully, God, so many people have diseases in Africa, like, Take yeah, it, you can yeah. take me off your list. Yeah, take I'm like, me off what? the list. Because you think I'm going to hook up with someone at this party, so God is telling me to go and the devil's trying to prevent me? Like, what's what's happening at this party? Yeah. And Carly leaves parties at midnight. Oh, yeah. Famously. I know. So I, I don't know what's <laughs> happening for you, quite frankly, at these I parties. I know, I know. Um, if I'm not, like, I don't even know what my answer to that is now. I get so tired and my <laughs> home is so nice. I have, I just, I want a party. And I so often I'm like, let's fucking go. I'm so excited for this party. And then by the time you're drunk, I'm like, the Uber's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I no, to be fair, this is why I'm obsessed with an event that starts at like five or 6 p.m. Yes. Like I want to be peak drunk at 9 p.m. Yeah. I want to like, you know, I, I want to wind down at midnight. Like I can't do this, like staying up late anymore. I, just, I have to go to London, Ontario on Saturday. I know. That's two days from now. Like, what am I? You got to prep for I have that. to prep for that. Yeah, I have to I prep agree. mentally to be in London, Ontario. Absolutely. So I believe the devil's real. And the devil the devil's telling me to drink and, and be drunk and hungover at drunk in London. I'm going to be drunk in London, Ontario, to be fair. I'm you have drink to. so much. It's well, a wedding, right? I didn't really. My dad called me at the beginning of this. No, it's not a wedding. It's my uh, little cousin Fraser's show. <laughs> I don't know why you thought it was a wedding. Aren't you going to like a bridal thing? I oh, know that's next Saturday. Sorry. I was looking at my next no. three months and I'm Blair. sorry. I've made the most chaotic selection of plans. I'm out of town all the time. Girl, you can't just drop that you have a little cousin named Frazier. <laughs> well, he's my cousin's son. He is an actor. And what he is, show is it? I don't know. I don't is it know like a show. play? It's a play or a musical at Original Kids Theater Company in London, Ontario. Shout out. Is it, uh, is it original? Um, you don't even know what the show is? No, I know nothing. Well, no, my, my cousin Laura hasn't told me shit. Okay. So it's Laura's obviously fault. Obviously Laura. there's tension there. No, it's fine. I love yeah, is this all making the episode? Or yeah, yeah. This? Add it in. Right. Add it in. Add it in. Shout out Original Kids Theater Company in London, Ontario. And shout I'm going out to little Frasier. <laughs> shout out to Frasier. I'm sure you're going to do a great job. How old is he? I don't know. But I follow him on Letterboxd now. He's got a scathing letterbox. I was reading his reviews. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> Frazier, if you're listening to this, keep it up, buddy. I really like scathing. He must be like 14, 13, 12, or 16. 
Blair, no. But, so, no. <laughs> He's got what? He's got to be one of those agents. That's a crazy way to say those agents. <laughs> you said them in the most insane well, I them, order. I did them in order of what I crying. think is most likely. <laughs> now you're crying. <laughs> I ordered them in most likely what is ages. 12, 14, 13, or 16. <laughs> not 15. <laughs> no, I don't think it's 15. No, because my other cousin's 15. They're not the same age. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what the, the devil is. is real, and, the he, is, is and real. he is in this room right now. I'm going. I'm hoping to have lunch with my friend Sadia. I don't know. <laughs> oh God, I don't know if we're okay. still for lunch, but I'm supposed to go to lunch and then dinner. And all my relatives, I didn't realize how many relatives are coming, so I'm getting really drunk. Yeah, you have to. I'm gonna get quite drunk at my cousin's wedding just because there's. I have. It's. I have to. Unfortunately, I love getting drunk. It's a real downfall in my life. That's okay. I guess this weekend, what I'm doing is celebrating Tartan Day. <laughs> Okay. It's just a holiday on Google. Are you going to look through your telescope this weekend? I'm going on Monday and I'm on not looking Monday. through a telescope. We're just going to look at the sky while the eclipse happens. Okay. This is I what happens like- when you date a straight man. <laughs> well, you're going to Kingston, Ontario. I'm going to dox you. Definitely. Um, you should go to the telescope. I feel like yeah, but sh- I think honestly, Blair. Um, so the thing about this eclipse is that um, <laughs> it's it happens in North America like only every every like okay. decade or so. So a lot of people are coming. There's like eclipse chasers who come and do this. Yes. I didn't. I thought this was a fake thing because why the fuck no. would you do that? And it's like tornado um, chasers. Exactly. And they were all going to go to Texas because Texas you're supposed to have like 30 minutes of uninterrupted eclipse time. Whoa. But it's been reported now that in Texas it's going to be cloudy, but it's not no. going to be cloudy in Kingston, Kingston Ontario. Ontario. So that means that now millions of people are embarking upon Kingston, Ontario. Ontario, which leads me to also believe that the telescope is going to be booked out. Okay. You know what? That's fair. Niagara Falls has also declared a state of emergency days early because it's supposed to be such a good place for the eclipse. They told oh, people no. to get groceries and gas days early. Well, you wow. know what? Niagara Falls is a little self-important. That's I know. True. What is they your, need what's, your most, what's your number one export? Ripley's Believe like It or Not falls, Museum Magnets? Rocks from the falls. When I Made went, of the Mist ponchos. When I went on the Made of the Mist... <laughs> Um, there was a woman who I was like maybe 12 and she was one of those women that was like- um, A whore. She was a whore for sure. Um, but she was big into the political statement of being like, I should be able to take my top off if men take their top off. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember her. it till this day because you really don't see normal boobs when you're 12 until- no. You don't see normal boobs until you're well into your adult years. You just think every single boob looks like a boob you see on in a movie. Oh yeah, I always have like normalboobs.com open you've, on my yes. phone. And you've talked about I've this talked on the about podcast. This a lot. <laughs> it was a real thing I, I went through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel this way with vaginas too. We need to accept I can't that talk about my different. vagina anymore on this podcast. Because I already, I had to explain my labia minora situation again the other day. I'm just exhausted. <laughs> again. <laughs> I feel like I'm always I'm talking about it. I'm just exhausted. I'm exhausted. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay. I don't want to think about it. So the devil is real. The devil's real. Boom shakalaka, baby. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the eclipse is going to be crazy. The eclipse is going to be I crazy. I want to go to the place we talked about on the podcast in Kingston, which is the submarine shop owned by the cult. Oh, yeah. The, the sandwich shop? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's not a sub shop. It's a sandwich no, shop. No, sandwiches. You should go eat the yellow deli. Yeah. It doesn't I actually a- wish I was coming to Kingston with you because You're welcome I, to join if you want to come. I don't think I can. We have improv rehearsal and I'm missing I'm improv. I also it. might be missing improv rehearsal for a different reason. But um, anyway. Getting railed. I'm getting <laughs> railed all night. <laughs> um, no, I think I might just have to work. Anyway. Okay, what's the final, okay. what's the final theory? The we're, we're, final we don't theory. agree with this. Or we do agree with it. The devil's real. The devil's real. I think the devil's. He is alive and well in Salem, I Massachusetts. I stand by this. If you're going to have a conspiracy theory, m- pick it. Pick one that's like. Yes. Like this. Absolutely. Pick one that's silly. Pick the mummy sunk the Titanic. Exactly. The devil is real. Because there was one Titanic one, if you recall, that was just that it wasn't an iceberg. It was a sheet of ice and just like, fucking boring. Nothing. Who cares? That's nothing. I don't care about that. Say that boring. a mummy is on board mm-hmm. and that it sunk the Titanic. This is why it's so hard to date men for me because I know so many things. And when I say my podcast is about the Salem Witch Trials and they go, um, did you know that actually it's because of the land grabs? I'm like, ugh. I know. It's I don't want to talk a, about Why are you dating children you? based on that voice? <laughs> that's, that's, how how they, that's how men talk. That's how men talk. Um, I didn't realize actually, that about my own voice. I one time, actually? I remember I went for like, um, me and Reese went for brunch. We just went to like a random place that like we would never go to. And it was completely empty except for another couple. And they were on their first date. And when I say <gasps> he was explaining World War II at her for oh hours, it was so bad. God. And all we were doing is listening and Reese just kept being like, 
man, you gotta stop. When I worked you gotta at- gotta stop. You have to stop. Oh my God. When I worked at Collective Arts, um, there was a like first date that came in and there was no one else in the bar. You can leave Collective Arts in. I don't care. I don't work there anymore. But um, when I worked at Collective Arts, uh, there was a first date that came in and clearly they had like misrepresented themselves to each other. Okay. And it was the most awkward thing I've ever seen in my life. And they were the only ones in there. So it was like oh. a big blow up. And she got mad. I think he said something kind of like offensive to her or something like that. And she at one point like got up and left. Um, it was something about like, I think that he had like lied about like his age or his job or something. You can't lie about your age or your job. Quite like it, frankly. Was, it was something weird. You where can she embellish was like, your height or whatever a couple. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's toxic masculinity and it's a cage mm-hmm. to men. I understand that. But you have to be honest about your Age and your height. Yeah. I mean, your job. Your age and your... Whoa. We just That's the ugliest part of my personality. Have we talked about this? Like that I like when everyone who I date is tall and big. No, I think that's fair. Yeah, women too. Yeah, I think that's fine. But I love it when somebody's bigger than me. I yeah. like to be little baby women, small, <laughs> to be you protected. Like to be small, being. I like to be small. Yeah, I mean, that's... I think that's fine. I just think that it... it um. It makes me less of a feminist than I'd like to be. <laughs> to be fair, I don't care very much about height, but I worry about what people will think if I'm taller than them because mm. I'm not super tall. No. But I, because I'm 5'4", I ride that line yeah. of like some people think I'm short, some people think I'm average. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just, I'm a deeply average height. Yeah. But I worry about dating someone who has a complex about someone being taller than them and what that would do. You know what I mean? Totally. No, yeah. I agree. Cause I've, there's a lot of people that I know who are short that I find attractive. Mm-hmm. What I hate is um, it's not the height, but it's a guy who has short guy energy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Who's like mad. He's mad about when it. He's mad. Cause he's got, you- a tr- he's, he's like, he's really jacked up cause he's mm-hmm. overcompensating as opposed to just like, like there's a, there's a guy I'll say, there's Sachin, who's in our improv troupe. Yes. And he's a shorter guy. He dresses fabulous. Mm-hmm. And he's a wonderful presence to be around. And mm-hmm. whenever I post him on my Instagram, I get about five DMs asking if he's single. Yeah. And I'm like, you should date Sachin. Mm-hmm. Everyone should. Yeah. He doesn't have that energy. He's not mad. He's living his best life. No. And like, I've talked to Sachin about it too, where it's just like, he is very much like, I'm just like a short guy. And if you don't care about it, no one cares. It's only if you care. When and this is very care. true because he doesn't give a fuck about it. So it's who it's not. It's like, what are you going to live your life like wanting to change this thing about you that you can't change? And also, like, he's like five foot five. Like half of women are going to be your height or shorter. Yeah, and it's also you can't fix that with plastic surgery. Like, you know know what I mean? Like, you're going to get leg extensions. Like, what's happening here? So anyway, Sachin is very handsome. If you want a photo, we can set you up. Truly, whenever I post him, I get like five messages being like, "Who's this? Who's this guy?" guy?" And honestly, I hope Sachin doesn't listen to this because I never respond to them. And I can really be. They all like can really be setting him up. Okay, I'll res- I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll respond. On, I'll ask him if he wants to. Whenever someone says to me like, "Oh, my friend, um, like two years ago, thought you were really cute," I'm like, "Well, you're now not my friend anymore." I know. I hate that. I hate when somebody mean. also goes like, "I used to have such a crush on you," and I'm like, "So kill yourself. Speak your baby. mind, babe. Speak your mind." Actually, like because I've had that happen. Communicate. There's a lot of people in my life who like I've known since I was like 16 or whatever. And they were like, oh, when I was 18, I had such a crush on you. And I was like, when I was 18, I had a crush on you. So if we figured this out. Yeah. <laughs> Could have used the words. But gun to my head. Like I would never, I would ne- I can't flirt or. I know. Or visually like in any way, give any indication that I like someone. I know. I'm really, I struggle with it. So you have to verbalize it or it's never mm. going to happen. Mm-hmm. Should we talk about the last theory? Anyway. Okay. Well, we're, this one's really quick. Yes. The girls are bored theory. The girls are bored theory. The girls were bored. This is the theory. We talked about this before. Um, the girls in Salem were oftentimes highly educated, which we don't talk about. They could all, all a lot of the young women could read and write mm-hmm. things of that nature, which is oftentimes it goes against the um, stereotype. Yes. But they weren't allowed any entertainment. Theater was considered a sin under Puritanism. Well, they were expected to just read the Bible and do chores. That all that, that's all your life was. It was like doing farm work. If you were an older sibling or a servant, you were also taking care of the mm-hmm. younger children. Your life was just labor and reading the Bible yeah. until death. Mm-hmm. Um, and your brother was scalped, so you're traumatized, but you're also bored. And your life is laid out in front of you as basically being like, either you die in childbirth or have a million kids and do this for the rest of your life. 
but you lie and say that people are witches and then all of a sudden everyone cares about you because you're sick and you're doted on and you don't have to do chores and everyone loves you and you just get to hang out with your other bewitched girls and walk mm-hmm. around town. Me and the girls bewitching through town. That's fun. Also like this theory kind of encapsulates this whole idea that like Tichuba was teaching them like fortune telling games and then they were so ridden with guilt and fear that they like started lashing out and like accusing people. Yeah. Like yada, yada, yada. Um, And then kind of this idea that this was all fear and then like once that spread to like kind of slightly older girls, like teens and young women, Mm -hmm. then it kind of was just like angst against the patriarchy. They were functionally like riot girling um, against women in town. And men. And men. But yeah, it was like all, it was basically servants who your life is bad when mm-hmm. you were servant or young women. Like it, it really was just like, oh, my life is, is quite bad. And if I, and if I lie, it's not bad. So I, I mean, there's nothing to debunk here. We can't tell whether or not the girls were bored or not because they weren't keeping a journal. But I like this theory a lot. Yeah. I mean, from what I've said, if you've been listening to this podcast through, this is a very akin to obviously what I believe is true. And I'm biased because I believe this, this is my experience and you can't take it away from Mm me. But I think that this is probably the most correct thing. Well, it's also like you think about like, even in more recent history times, like when people came to like Canada and the United States as like pioneers, like colonizing the land and like they were promised like all this great stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then all they got was like, okay, you're stealing land from the indigenous people. You're living in the middle of nowhere. You can't like, farm the land because you don't know how to farm it. Yeah, really. like you yeah. don't know how to farm the land and you just like find these like diaries from women being like, this is like the most miserable life yeah. ever that you could possibly imagine. Like this is so boring and it's like that's kind of what they were dealing with where it's just like there's just nothing there's nothing totally and I think it's also like when you understand that all these women are teenagers and like the neuroscience on the teenage brain also Mm -hmm. just being like teenagers are insane this is why they talk about like with suicide and um acts of mass violence If you can get out of your teen years, it's way less likely to happen because your impulse control is is just much much better. better. Yeah. Yeah. I do think about like, I have so many conversations with like my friends now about boredom Mm. and how hard it is to prevent boredom and how it's like, if I'm not on my phone constantly, I get bored. If I don't have an activity to do constantly, I get bored. I know, we're actually in a different time now where like boredom is good. We need a little bit more boredom. That's the thing. But I'm like, it's crazy to think that like you have a computer in your pocket that you can access any information Mm -hmm. in the world and you still struggle with boredom. Imagine if all you have is a Bible and then you're stuck inside because the winter's so bad. And then also like your father slash employer is harassing you. You're experiencing like all sorts of horrific things. And the only thing you can do for fun is you're playing some kind of fortune telling game, but then you feel very guilty about it because it goes against this idea yeah. of like puritanical Christianity. It's like, yeah, boredom's just the 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 friggin' tip of the iceberg. Well, totally. Because I think like when I say that boredom is good, what I mean nowadays is like, I think people aren't bored enough, um, yeah. which is why you can create so many good things if you let your mind run wild. Oh yeah. Those girls aren't allowed to even do that. So it's like not even a question. Like if they were allowed to like paint or write or whatever, Mm -hmm. that's why you get like so many of these women who are like great writers in the past were like pretty wealthy and also sickly because they had to spend a shit ton of time inside just writing letters and stuff, right? So if we let these young girls write letters, write a lot more or express themselves then that boredom is rectified. Yeah. Um, But this is not, like their life Mm -hmm. just sucks. Whereas now, I was saying this the other day where like everything is gonna become so fast so quickly unless we stop things, like the the algorithms. Like unless we stop it, it's gonna become so fast. The algo. But the bright side of that is if you can resist that, you can get so much more shit done. Yes. Than the average person. Yeah. If you can resist spending your entire life on the internet scrolling. On the algo, just consuming information that doesn't really matter to you. You just are doing it. You can get some motherfucking shit done. And I have a hot tip if you want to stay off the internet is poison it for yourself (laughs) and make it cause you such debilitating anxiety. Post one viral TikTok where people get mad at you and you will no longer want to be in the algorithm. Yeah. Did that happen recently or is it just now? Oh, this has happened to me so many times. I know it's happened to you so many times. That's why I was wondering yeah. if it was a new thing or if it was oh, just no, it was no. aftershocks. Of- no, my t- I, I'm slowly putting my 
TikTok to rest like a beloved pet. May she rest. Um, may she rest. I had a great time on TikTok. I feel like I've just moved past the platform. It doesn't like me. I don't like it. I feel like I'm having way more fun on other platforms. You should. You said this before at, I think, St. Patrick's Day or something. You were saying that you were considering doing video essays. You should do I video am. essays. I know. I think I probably should because I would like to do something that's just me. Um, but then I don't want to steal your YouTube thing. Oh, girl. You're a YouTube girl. I don't care. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. The ownership I have of YouTube is <laughs> it's for everyone. Everyone can do it. <laughs> I know. It is something I'm thinking about because yeah. I would like to put out because I just think it's a lot more of a positive space. It's not a very positive space, but TikTok is insane. Well, even I find like Instagram is a little bit more fun just in the way that like it's you can kind of like make yourself. It's more like of a like my space kind of like, yes, this is how I want to be perceived where it's like TikTok is very much. About, I'm showing like, this video to a thousand strangers and seeing what they think about it. And yeah. Then and then you're going to be thousand. Yeah. More you're going to be like hyper categorized into something. Whereas like Instagram, you can for sure get like an influx of people that like hate you, but they're all from Facebook. They're not very present. And then the people that follow you are just kind of like, yeah, usually just there for the vibes. Absolutely. All right. So those are the conspiracy theories Love. of the Salem witch trials. I think this is pretty like it's we had a good mix. I think so. I think it's time for a little something else. Uh, maybe a let's make this tragedy about us. <laughs> it's the time in the podcast, the podcast's only segment in which we take this horrific tragedy and we make it about us in some way. Because we are getting more and more mad that we were not involved in the witch trials. I really think I could have shaken things up. I think I could have added a, a pizzazz. Absolutely. I could have I could have been a warlock. How come there are no warlocks? Well, there were. So what's your okay, what's if you had to mm -hmm. make a conspiracy theory up about the Salemless trials, what would your conspiracy theory be? Um, my conspiracy theory is that the Salem witch trials were started because a time traveler Time traveled back in time oh, okay. to start them. They went to the Puritan times mm -hmm. and they started it um, in the hopes that it would drive down rye crop so that they could buy rye crop in the future. Because rye was the Bitcoin absolutely. of this era. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Also, Epstein was, was there. there. <laughs> yeah. That's the main one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think, okay, I think mine would be that like this all happened in actually um, Kingston, Ontario. I love this. And uh, they it's just been propaganda when Kingston was trying to become the capital city of Canada. They propagandized it and were like, actually, it was in Salem, Massachusetts. I love this. And that's why those two cities famously fight. Salem, yes. Massachusetts and Kingston, Ontario famously. are famously, famously in a battle. The reason we haven't brought it up before now it is, isn't that we're lying. It's that it's so sensitive. That it's we're, it's really dangerous to talk about. Really dangerous to, because the mafia can come after you. Yeah. If you're not careful. Okay, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Let's make one up together. Okay. I'll say one voice. a noun. Okay. <laughs> so it'll be like a name of somebody. Yes. Or a name of two people. Okay. You say what they're doing. Okay. And I say, um, why? I love this. Okay. okay. Giles Corey is taking a big poop. Um, because of, um, the Illuminati. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's our conspiracy That's perfect. theory. perfect. That Giles Corey took a big poop, poop. Because, because of, of the, the Illuminati. Illuminati. And actually the Illuminati was started at the Salem Witch Trials. Yeah. Because Sarah Good had too much information. And we needed to snuff her out. Yeah. Well, any, any parting comments? I feel like honestly ending on, it's better to burn out than fade away. And I feel as though we burned out with Giles Corey took a big poop because of the Illuminati. Yeah. We're not going to get better than no, that. No, no, no. That was good. Giles Corey took a big poop because of the Illuminati. Spread it around. This has been Girl Historians. We love you so much. Yes. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.